resolution chamber up. If I saw something like this, I could respond to it. Of course, a spore crawler would have been really all he needed to counter that entire play. He didn't get one. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are currently moving into game two. We've got Sase in the red trunks. He is playing Protoss. And he is from Team Meteor Makers versus his opponent, the one and only E.G. Idra. He is in the blue trunks, and he is playing Zerg up to the northeast. So we didn't really get too much of an opportunity to see Sase's metal, I suppose, because Idra gave up immediately on seeing the Dark Templar warp in. The proxy pylon was down in the corner, and I have to apologize indeed to Sase for not using that probe for anything else. It was smart. The last thing he wanted to do was actually alert Idra to the presence of that probe that was hidden in the corner for a good five minutes at least, and then was able to place the proxy pylon in a perfect position. Sase, in the meantime, pushing forward for a quick bit of scouting action and most likely to deny an expansion from his opponent. Very easy to do on Zelnaga Caverns. Idra evidently confident on Zelnaga Caverns since he did pick this map. And we've got the drones coming out right here. He will surely not attempt to expand. That's simply not going to happen. So I would think that he will end up going for either an extractor first or a supporting pool, needless to say. As to which, it's questionable. It really depends how he feels today. Sase with Gateway coming down on 13 supply. A little bit of chasing action going on right here. Sase steals five minerals, which is an unforgivable sin. Heading into the minimal line once again to say, oh look, I have five minerals, and then run around like an idiot. That's what probes do, folks. And there's the extractor after the spawning pool. So Idra's got some coming back from this to do. The thing is, this will not work twice. The same trick will surely not work twice. Sase able to take him out right there simply because Idra was caught out completely in terms of not having the tech to deal with it. He was fairly late with the tech into Lair. He wasn't really sure just how advanced that Dark Templar Shrine actually was. And it started very, very early. So by the time those Dark Templar warped in, that was it. It was... I wouldn't really say it was game over, if I'm totally honest. He would have definitely conceded at least one expansion. A quick evolution chamber and a spore crawler might have helped. Especially if he'd started building it immediately upon spotting it. But he decided to go lair instead, which of course takes much longer. And then he have to morph in an overseer to actually spot those Dark Templar, which didn't seem like the right thing to do. But once again, it's very hard to deal with, so I can hardly blame him. Simulator up right now for Sase, and there's the cybernetic score. Not aggressive at all initially. Proto boosting this one out. We'll see what he decides to do with it. Two gas doesn't really indicate anything, honestly. Sase may attempt to go for the same trick twice, which I wouldn't think would work. I mean, I think Idra would definitely have his number on that one. But you never know, it is certainly a possibility. Idra pushing forward once again, having a look and seeing what he can see. Trying to take some map control. And I'm also noticing the income of Sase getting rather high. The two possibilities, of course, being that he's going to build a lot of gateways, always looking to expand. One gateway coming up right there, Sentry to follow that one up as well. Idra playing nice and cautiously, nice and defensively, and hopefully adapting to what his opponent's actually doing. He has a huge amount of scouting information. He's able to pretty much see everything. Idra slides in there and finds the gateway, and he leaves hopefully satisfied with this discovery. Idra holding onto the rest of the map as well with a few Zerglings. It's not a big deal, but it's enough. The hatchery almost complete right now for Idra, and Roaches to follow this one up as well. We're still really waiting to figure out exactly what Sase is doing. He's got gateways up, he's not really getting tech. He just completed that one. There's two gateways and an expansion right here. He does have those two sentries out, but that's not a huge amount. And what I'd be concerned about is these gateways might not really be enough to deal with a big, determined push. Could be. A big, determined push with the roaches right here. Hallucination coming up right here for Sase. Interesting to gain scouting information, certainly. Now, Idra actually has a, tord a rather torted history, as you might be aware, with the hallucination. Needs to be a little bit careful. No doubt he won't, once again, make that same mistake twice, so I wouldn't be concerned about that. But what it will do is give Sa Sase a great amount of scouting information. He can very easily fly over with a fake phoenix. Idra, on the other hand, looking for roaches. He's got five. He found two more down the back of the sofa right here. 
pushing forward once again. And what's the defense like? It's not looking amazing for Sarte, honestly. He can warp in more units. He's now finally got that warp gate. Well, he actually got the warp gate research finished a while ago, but he's just got this one up with the warp gate warp. Another gateway coming up to follow that one up. Sarte does not have a huge amount of defenses right now. This hallucinated Phoenix will see what's coming in. More to the point, will Idra actually know that it's a hallucination? We'll probably find out shortly. It may hold Sarse long enough in order to get a hold of units to counter these roaches. The problem is that Idra is going in very, very hard, and this is only a one pylon support. If he takes down this pylon, everything will be shut down, the production side and that photon cannon. Nice little bit of force field play right here, but he's got to stop that pylon from going down. If he doesn't, then Idra will have all those production facilities shut down, and of course the war pits cancelled. That's two gateways out of four now cancelled, and Idra's starting to get really aggressive right here with Sarse. He's got to pull back. He really, really has. He's got these sentries trying to deal with these Zerglings, and they're doing so pretty well, but now he's got these Roaches to deal with. He's relying primarily on the force fields in order to make that happen. Pulling back once again. Another pylon coming to try and support this one. It's taking fire. The shields are already down. They will collapse momentarily, but he gets the cannon up. That will help an awful lot. Can he do it? No, he cannot. He's blocked in right there. Nice play there by Sase, and he nails down Idra. Almost lost that pylon again. That would have been absolutely critical, but that was a really well-played defense there. And honestly, looking at what Sase had, it looked really, really risky. It looked like a very bad situation. Sase pulls it back very nicely and actually gets through it with bare minimum losses. Idra's only killed six units total. Right now, the economic advantage is in the hands of Idra. He does have two bases, and he's got plenty of drones up. It's 42 to 38 right now. It's not a huge difference. Upgrades on the way up for Sase, who is relying primarily on gateways, and he's currently sitting on five, possibly looking for the sixth to follow that one up. There it is. Sase pushing forward once again. He's got six sentries and five stalkers in the mix. Idra actually has very, very little right now. He needs to build units immediately, and that's exactly what he's going to do. He's got more roaches on the way. He has, however, got an opportunity to slide past and do damage to this mineral line, but there is a cannon in it, and it's also really well walled off to the point where I don't think Idra can actually get in. That's not ideal, considering the pressure that's about to come in right here. And if he can cut off these reinforcements so that these are not timed right, is the timing good? Idra's timing is usually good, certainly. He's looking to get surrounded right here, and he's in the mix, and those force fields aren't proving to be all that useful. The shields go up, and he's able to stop the roaches from doing damage. I think that's the main thing right here. Sarsi able to defeat the Zergling. He's got an army supply count advantage. Now going into the fight against the roaches right here. A zealot taken out, and Sarsi is not confident about engaging right here. He's drawing his opponent back. He needs the force field energy to really make this work. Idra continuing with the pressure right here. Can he pick up another sentry? That's what he's looking for right now. Barely any health left. Two more shots will take that one out. And Sase backing off, looking to regroup and counterattack. And here it comes. E.G. Idra being drawn out of position. A very nice play there by Sase. And if you can divide him with small force fields, that'll be even better. Big fire coming down right here. He loses the sentries. A couple of Zerglings come in to reinforce. That's not enough. Idra's force is getting annihilated right here. But Sase is taking losses. Additional reinforcements streaming in right now for the back. Idra backing away as quickly as he can. Army supply still in favor of Sase right now. Tech is on its way up. We've got Lair already halfway complete for Idra, who is continuing with this aggression against these Stalkers. Stalkers are having none of that, though. There's a good number of them. And they're streaming across the field. The thing is, it's very, very risky because, of course, he gets ends up getting charged by that, and he doesn't really have the sentries to deal with those Zerglings. So that's a very aggressive counter push there by Idra, but he is being pushed back once again. He must do something about this. Another expansion coming up on the gold minerals by the looks of it at this time around. Big fire raining down on EG Indra's base. Must do something about pushing this back. He needs units immediately. He's got more roaches to pull out on it. A Zergling surround. It's a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic surround right there. He draws his opponent completely out of position. More warpings, however. There's a boxy pylon right there. Those Zerglings are starting to run out. And down they go. And a complete reversal right here by Sase. An excellent surround by Idra, but still. He's dealing with a lot of units coming in right here. It's a six gateway push, folks. So army supply is heavily in the favor of Sase right now. But Idra is able to hold this base only just. He must follow it up with something. More roaches coming on the field. I'm very concerned for Idra right now. I really, really am. He had the economic advantage. He's now conceded it only slightly. There's the force field play. It's not really able to do too much right now. Once he's able to nail down the Zerglings, he can get into a straight fire fight against these roaches, but he's choosing not to do that. An additional warp in from the rear right there. Saving shield power. He'll go back in and just push Idra back very, very slowly. 
Not going for a big push right now. Maybe he will when he walks in his tunnel three. And now the blink is ready to go. This is going to change things around a little bit, but EG Idra is bringing in a large force of roaches. There's a quick blink. Micromanagement there by Sase, avoiding a huge amount of damage. It's excellent blink micromanagement right here. He's able to avoid most of the damage on those stalkers. As you can see, Idra's force getting torn up right here. Sase ripping his way through it. Does he have the numbers? He certainly, certainly does. And Idra's roach count is spiraling into oblivion. GG, ladies and gentlemen.